Hello, I'm uh, Paul Weston and I'm talking today about the government's response to the whole COVID-19 issue. Uh, how many people have really died from COVID-19 rather than with COVID-19 is a legitimate question. Uh, but another question really asked is how many people have died as a direct result of the criminal incompetence of Boris Johnson's catastrophic government? Now here are some figures from the July 24th Office for National Statistics report on total deaths in England and Wales and the two highlighted columns show the deaths between week 13 and week 21. Now just for clarification, week 1 began on January the 1st. The figures in yellow are total weekly deaths this year. The figures in blue are the weekly deaths averaged over the last five years. Now, up until week 13, the death rates were very similar to the five-year average, but that all changed in week 13, which rose rapidly to twice as many deaths uh, over a three-week period, followed by a gradual decline to normality again by week 21. Now, over that eight-week period, we saw a total of 147,000 total deaths against a five-year average of only 91,000 meaning an extra 50, uh, 56,000 people died over that time frame. Now, why did COVID-19 suddenly become such a killer uh, at the beginning of week 13? After all, it had been around for at least three months before that date, and the answer is simple. Week 13 equates to the 27th of March 2020, which is the date the government ordered the NHS to clear 25,000 patients out of the hospitals without checking them for COVID-19 and placing them into residential care homes filled with the old and the ill, uh, the very people the British government knew were the most vulnerable to the COVID virus, uh, having looked at the situation in Italy, which was several weeks ahead of us. And predictably enough, COVID-19 ripped through the care homes and killed tens of thousands of oldies. Uh, a BBC report, which incorporated Office for National Statistics data, stated there were 66,000 care home deaths in this time frame compared to a five-year average of 37,000, meaning approximately 30,000 excess deaths, uh, all of which were attributable to COVID-19. Now, Health Secretary Matthew Matt Hancock uh, has stated that ministers will accept no responsibility and take no blame for placing infected patients into the old folks' homes. And Chris Whitty, the government's somewhat lacklustre chief medical officer, has mentioned that in hindsight, it was a mistake uh, to do so, which is a little like the Admiral of the Fleet, suggesting that with the benefit of hindsight, it had not been a good idea uh, to hold barbecues in the magazines of warships containing, as they do, a fair old bit of high explosive. Now, I'm not sure that Matthew Matt Hancock can simply pronounce his culpability away so breezily. I think a better person to judge him on this would be a real live judge presiding over a courtroom with Boris Johnson, Witty and Matty facing charges of corporate manslaughter. Now, as the old saying goes, who is the killer? The fox or the farmer who put the fox into the hen house? And it gets worse. Without wishing to sound callous, many of the 30,000 oldies who croaked it were on their last few months anyway. Unlike the 20,000 or so people suffering from heart, uh, cancer and respiratory illnesses who died during April and May because the NHS, and don't forget to clap them, wanted nothing to do with them over the last four months and cancelled all their planned treatments. And these 20,000 needless deaths were not made up of very old people, but people who, had they been treated, could have lived for another 20 years. I'm not blaming the magisterially useless NHS for these deaths, though I'm blaming the government. We've all known for at least two months that COVID-19 just is not the killer disease uh, that the government and their collaborators in the mainstream media have gone to surreal and propagandized, uh, propagandized lengths to lie to us about. And we have known that the hospitals are half empty and the doctors and nurses within them so bored they've been perfecting their dance routines for TikTok, or at least until they were banned from so doing for rather obvious public relations reasons. 
Any competent government would have looked at these half-empty hospitals and looked at the statistically irrelevant COVID death rates for people aged under 70 without existing life-threatening illnesses and immediately reopened the hospitals for the cancer, respiratory and heart disease patients. But it isn't a competent government though, is it? Instead of doing the right thing, Boris and co have doubled down on their COVID-19 hysteria instead and continued to watch as 20,000 non-COVID-19 patients died, even as the COVID virus slowly disappeared. And worse again, these power-crazed inadequates have block-booked the, in, uh, the intensive care unit beds in all the private hospitals, which I gather are now largely empty. So even if you were prepared to mortgage your house to get a heart operation, you can't get into a private hospital, even though most of their beds are empty, because the NHS have block booked everything, despite the NHS hospitals themselves being half empty. Uh, this is the stuff of madness. And it gets worse again, I'm afraid to say, but uh, that's for my next video. I will uh, close this one with the observation that the excess deaths for 2020 are approximately 50,000 higher than the last five-year average. So if you add the 30,000 dead oldies, effectively polished off by this government's criminal incompetence, uh, to the 20,000 people who died because their cancer, heart and respiratory treatments were cancelled by this criminally incompetent government, you get 50,000 deaths, which pretty much matches the excess deaths so far for 2020. You know, had the entire government gone on a six-month holiday in early March and let the country run itself, the vast majority of these 50,000 dead people would still be alive today. In other words, it is hard to argue against the allegation that this government is directly responsible for all the excess deaths to date and that, that this uh, and and that this government should really be in court charged with corporate manslaughter uh, rather than being allowed to uh, remain in office where they can indulge themselves in yet more egotistical criminal incompetence by ordering everyone to wear face masks, which is as futile as it is authoritarian. We're really not at risk, you idiot Johnson. So leave us alone and stop actually, literally killing people who really are at risk, the very old and the very ill, assuming there are any left.